Casting Weapon Props with Flexible Foam. We're going to cast some weapon props using our new 10 pound density flexible foam. And this is a very dense, self skinning flexible foam that you can use as an alternative to uh, PT Flex or using PT Flex as a skin on a less dense foam because of the really good skin that you get built up in a compressed mold like what we'll be doing here in a minute. Uh, you get a really nice skin surface that bonds well to any paint or any metal powders that you put in the surface of the mold. Now here, uh, as you might have seen in some of our past videos, we're brushing a metal powder into the mold. This is our dark gunmetal powder. And this powder works very well for simulating uh, steel or blued steel or any kind of uh, dark steel or iron parts that you need to make. Now here we've mixed up 140 grams of 10 pound flexible foam. And this is a new foam, our prop foam, that's mixed 40 parts of A to 100 parts B by weight. Now normally this foam will cure to a bright white or kind of a cream color. So we're going to add some black poly color here. And the black poly color gives us a nice background color to any kind of metallic effect. And that way if anything cracks or chips on the surface, we don't see bright white foam that just screams fake coming through. So by having that black color intrinsic to the part, uh, we have a much nicer, higher quality prop. And it also helps in just in case we missed a small spot with our metal powder, we make sure that uh, what shows through to the surface is uh, a metallic or a more metallic color than just raw foam. Now with the 10 pound prop foam, it usually takes about uh, 30 or 45 minutes to demold a part. Now keep in mind that rigid and flexible urethane foams, and especially flexible urethane foams, require warmer temperatures to cure and skin properly. So uh, anytime you're working in a cool environment, it's a good idea to warm up your molds and warm up your casting area to make sure that you get a really good skin thickness on your finished part. Uh, the, the optimum temperature for working with flexible foam is around 75 to 85 degrees. Uh, warmer temperatures are going to work, but just keep in mind, hot climates speed up most materials, colder climates slow it down, and foams just become much more temperamental in cold weather. So you know, when in doubt, warm up your mold. If you're seeing some skin issues, it's always a good idea to put a heat lamp over your mold to warm up the inside of the mold. Now here we're removing the uh, sprue coming out of the pour spout there. And now we have a finished cast wrench. Now the 10 pound foam goes through a stage where it's fairly flexible. But keep in mind it will firm up, so it's a good idea to make sure it sits flat until it cures completely. And uh, here's the freshly cast wrench, and here's one we cast a day before that you see has a lot firmer, almost a semi-rigid feel. And you'll notice every bit of our metal powder transferred to our part with perfect detail. Now we're going to do a, another cast with more of our 10 pound foam and this time we're going to very carefully brush some of the dark metal powder into some key areas to simulate uh, the pipe wrench the way uh, it came from the manufacturer where it has some exposed steel on the part but the rest has the appearance of uh, painted steel. And to do that, yeah, you can get a, a little brush. This is a brush that came with some acrylic monomer. It's a very fine brush. These are little disposable brushes. You can even use little kids' uh, watercolor brushes for this. But you just need a very fine brush and just to hit those key areas where the wrench is naturally exposed steel. And once we brush that into those areas, we're going to pour our foam. Now this time I want to explain some of the particulars in actually casting. You'll notice we actually pour the foam first and then close the mold. And this is what I call the waffle machine technique of when we mix up our foam. And again, this is a 140 gram batch, 40 grams of part A and 100 grams of part B with some red poly color to give it that nice red uh, monkey wrench kind of color. Now the waffle maker technique of which I spoke is, is this. Basically we're going to pour this into the deeper side of the mold. And I'm going to pour it in all those areas that otherwise if we tried to pour it in through the bottom of the mold, we might not get it into those key areas. So we're going to fill up that first half, close it up, 
and then flip it over. And that allows that foam to sit in its uh, liquid, unexpanded state on both halves of the mold. And that helps us get a much better detailed surface. Now we've got to move fast because this foam does cure quick. And this particular foam, you've got about 35 to 45 seconds or so to get the mold clamped up and closed before it really starts to foam up and react. And just keep in mind, in this, for this particular mold, we're actually creating a little bit of compression there that helps with that skin thickness on the surface. And again, we waited about 30 minutes to demold our part. Keep in mind, on a hot day here in Texas, we can demold a part probably in as little as about 20 minutes. But uh, really, you don't want to push that too much. You want to make sure so you don't get any distortions in your foam. Make sure when you're casting flexible foam parts that you give it a good 30 to 40 minutes before you demold it. And there's our cast wrench. And you'll notice all of our metal powders transferred over and gave us a very realistic prop wrench right out of the mold. Now it just takes a little bit of trimming and we have a realistic prop wrench ready for action. Now, the final piece we're going to cast is a handgun prop. This is a mold we've used in pre previous videos. This is a tin sill 7030 silicone mold. This is a pretty standard silicone for uh, casting resin or foams. And keep in mind, another, another issue here when you're casting foams, especially self-skinning foams or foams with high expansion rates, you don't want to use a rubber that's too soft. We typically like to use rubber that's about a Shore A20 or higher. So 7120 or 7325 is about the softest material that I would recommend for casting a foam with a high expansion rate. So back to the tin sill 7030 mold at hand, we brushed in our dark gunmetal powder and we're ready to cast our foam. Now again, we've uh, used a 140 gram batch, 40 grams of part A and 100 grams of part B. And again, we've added black polycolor. That's always a good idea to use either black or brown when you're casting metallic parts. And again, here we want to make sure we work this into the detailed areas to make sure that we get a really good skin on our part and that we don't uh, miss any of these thin sections like the trigger guard. So I'm going to use the stir stick there to push that into the trigger guard and make sure I pour that into all those key areas of that handgun. And in addition to that, we're going to do the, our, our waffle maker technique again, flip it over to the other side, and close up our mold. And again here, it takes some practice to get this down of moving quick. Make sure you get all, all your straps ready to go. And notice my straps are already laced up. Since foam reacts so quick, you never want to have these straps uh, unlaced when you're working with this material. So again, just to recap, Remember, when you're casting flexible foams, especially foams where you want a really good skin thickness, it's a good idea to use a silicone mold. It's a good idea to also cast in a warm environment. Anything between the high 70s and high 80s is going to get the best results. If you're too cold, you're not going to get a good solid skin on your finished part. Now on parts like this handgun that have these thin sections like around the trigger or the trigger guard, we want to make sure we give it adequate time to cure properly. You don't want to demold that too early and cause a distortion in those areas. So we want to make sure we give this a good 45 minutes or more to demold. Anytime you have a thin section when you're dealing with polyurethane materials, it's a good idea to give it plenty of time to cure properly. And again, it also helps with those thin sections if we warm up the mold to make sure that the material has a little bit extra heat to help it cure. And now we have our finished prop handgun. And you'll notice with our finished part, we caught perfect detail. Even the serial number on the finished handgun is faithfully reproduced in 10-pound foam. And there you have it. New 10-pound foam used in silicone molds. And as with our other materials like PT Flex and the 74 series rubbers, uh, the new prop foam is compatible with all of the metal powders and all of the polycolor pigments. And as always, all of these materials are available on our web store.